Hi, my name is Rachel Moot, and I'm an aquarist at the Quincy Animal Care Center here at the New England Aquarium. This is the off-site facility where we do quarantine, holding, and larval rearing. Today, I'll be talking to you about our dwarf seahorse breeding program. Over the past several years, we have been working behind the scenes here in Quincy to raise dwarf seahorses for both our exhibit in the Yawkey Gallery and to donate to other aquariums. We have a specialized system dedicated to dwarf seahorse quarantine and breeding. Seahorses are typically housed in tanks called pseudochrysals, which are U-shaped tanks with rounded edges that allow for gentle flow. This helps to keep their food suspended in the water column. Seahorses are monogamous, meaning a male and a female form a bonded pair. In order to track genetics and control breeding, we keep our male and female seahorse populations separate. When it is time to breed, we choose one male and one female to move into a tank on their own, and we hope that we've done a good job playing matchmaker. We have four active breeding pairs. Throughout the day, we make sure to provide our seahorses with plenty of live foods, similar to what they would have in the wild. This includes copepods, adult, and baby brine. We also provide them enriching habitat. So far this year, we have raised just over 100 fry from our breeding pairs. We had a birth this week in this tank with 11 new fry. Fry is the term for one of the various life stages a fish goes through. Fish are called fry when they have developed to the point where they are able to feed themselves, and for seahorses, they are at the stage when they are born. A common question we get is where do these fry go? We grow up these fry in Quincy until they are full adults. At that point, they either move to our Yaki exhibit, become part of our broodstock, or move to another aquarium. Broodstock is the term used for mature seahorses or other fish that are held specifically for breeding purposes. Now, why do we do this? By breeding our own seahorses to display in our exhibits, as well as those at other aquariums, we are reducing the impact on wild seahorse populations. This follows the New England Aquarium's mission of conservation and sustainability. Before I head off, I have some fun facts to send you off with. 1. Male seahorses have a small pouch on their body where the female places her eggs. Then about 10 to 14 days later, the male gives birth to 10 to 30 fry that are only about 8 millimeters in size. 2. Seahorse fry are independent as soon as they are born and eat baby brine shrimp and copepods. Those are the tiny specks that are moving around in the water column. 3. Seahorses do not have teeth and will capture prey as it swims close to their mouth by rapidly intaking water through its snout. 4. Dwarf seahorses are one of the smallest species of seahorse and only grow to be about 2 to 2.5 two centimeters. And lastly, seahorses are fish. Instead of the scales you see on most fish, they have a thin layer of skin covering hard, bony plates. They are most closely related to pipefishes and sea dragons, which you can also find at the New England Aquarium. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed a peek at our facility. It's always a blast sharing our work with you. Thanks, folks. Bye.